This is a brand new Vast A1 gravel bike and it's made from super magnesium. It's claimed to offer the performance of carbon fiber, but at a price much closer to that of aluminium. But hang on a moment, haven't we been here before? Magnesium, I mean. Well, yes, we have. There have been magnesium bikes in the past, but they've never really set the world on fire. Excuse the pun. But Super Magnesium is aiming to change all that and put it right back on the menu alongside the more common frame materials at the moment. This bike here with a SRAM Apex 1x group set costs just £1,899 and looks really good on paper. But can it really rival carbon fibre? Well, there's one way to find out. Let's go for a ride. I'm David, this is Ali, and you're watching Just Ride Bikes. I am genuinely blown away with how well the bike rides, and I had no idea what to expect, to be honest. I've ridden magnesium bikes in the distant past, but not enough to call on for any sort of comparison. And this material isn't your bog standard magnesium, it's super magnesium. So I can only make comparisons with more commonly available materials, carbon, aluminium, titanium, and steel. And take on board the claim from the company that it's the performance and weight of carbon, but the price of aluminium. It's got a really surprisingly smooth ride quality. It's not as buttery smooth as a good carbon frame, but it's definitely a lot smoother than an aluminium bike. And it's got a really peppy, lively, and dare I say it, springy ride quality. It does a really good job of isolating you from big impacts and high frequency vibrations, but without diluting them totally, so you're left with a engaging ride quality, but without that harshness you often get on materials like aluminium. And it does remind me of the way a good titanium bike handles bumps and vibrations. And as good as carbon fibre is, and so often the benchmark for all bikes, and it's a wonderful material, it can sometimes feel a bit dull because it does such a good job of soaking up impacts and vibrations when done well, that it leaves you feeling a bit uninvolved. This bike though is very involving and it feels really lively and just a lot of fun. And all that smoothness is coming despite the fact we have quite narrow by gravel bike standards, tyres, and an aluminium handlebar and seat post. Normally on a bike you might want to go to wide tyres to get more comfort, but on this bike I'm not feeling the lack of width from the tyres at all. I mean I would probably change the tyres for a 40 or 42, but I don't feel I need to rush out and do that straight away on this bike. So the 37 Riddlers are working really well in combination with a super magnesium frame. Magnesium isn't a new frame material by any stretch of the imagination and older viewers will remember examples like the Kirk Precision and the Pinarello Dogma which even went on to win a Tour de France in the early 2000s. But where those frames and the material back then failed to offer a long lasting legacy and a real alternative to carbon, aluminium, steel and titanium, this company with Super Magnesium is hoping to change all that and in the process change the reputation of this often misaligned material. And it's all down to super magnesium, or AE81 to give it its proper name, which is not nearly as exciting as super magnesium, is it? So AE81 stands for the components of its alloy. A for aluminium, and E for rare earth elements, and 8% of the former and 1% of the latter to give us this super magnesium frame. What that means to us is that compared to aluminium, while it's not as stiff, it is stronger and less dense, so it can be lighter than aluminium and offers good compliance as well, and the weight is closer to carbon fiber. To put that weight in perspective, this frame set has a claimed 1200 gram weight, and compared to a popular gravel bike like a new Canyon Grizzle, the CFSL carbon version weighs just over 1000 grams, so about 180 grams less than this, but the alloy version of that bike is 1540 grams. So you can see this bike is quite a bit lighter than the aluminium alternative and almost as light as a good carbon frame. Now, of course, you can go much, much lighter with carbon fiber, but you have to pay a lot more to get a frame that's well under a kilo 
and anything down to 600 or 700 grams is going to cost you a small fortune. The frame set will cost more than this entire bike. But the frame material is only one part of the equation. It's how that material is used in a frame that really matters. And Vars has made in the A1 a gravel all-road bike. As you see by chunky tires, lots of mounts for bike packing accessories and a go anywhere attitude. The way this bike handles in terms of geometry is pretty good for the most part. It's a bit steeper and a bit shorter than I would prefer compared to more progressive modern gravel bikes that are longer and slacker. But in the woods, on tight, twisty trails, it's really easy to turn direction very quickly. It uh, darts from one corner to the next, so no hesitation, quite fast steering as well. So if you like a bike that feels nimble and agile, this is definitely it. I'm riding a size medium, there's only four sizes available. I do feel a little bit cramped. I have a short stem, which I want for that good handling and that good steering, but a bit more reach would be nicer. The bike does have a slightly soft sensation when you're really putting the power down or really cranking on the handlebars and the turns. It's not flexing or wallowing, just doesn't feel as sharp, precise and pinpoint accurate as a really good carbon frame or even an aluminium bike. But for riding off road as I am now, that bit of softness is no bad thing. The bike was first launched about two years ago, but since then it's had a few updates based on feedback on that original model. So we had lots of tyre clearance up to 700 by 42 or 650 by 52. So big tyres, big wheels or small wheels depending on your preference. The bike is one by and two by compatible and to assure there's adequate clearance for the front mech and the wire tyres the bike will take, they dropped the drive side chainstay using a very smart 3D forged element down there and definitely gives the bike a very distinctive profile. We have internal routing for the gears and brakes and it all looks neat inside the fork, into the down tube and out of the bottom bracket along the chainstays. But I'm not really sure about this big bung on the down tube personally. A more elegant, simpler solution might have been uh, preferable, but it works, nothing rattles uh, when you're riding, so it's all good on that front. We have lots of accessory mounts for bike packing, so extra cages and bottles on the fork, on a down tube, and we have mud guard mounts as well. So a really good option for winter riding here in the UK. Mud guards, fat tires, a year round, do everything in bike. Besides all that, the material offers interesting price, value for money and environmental benefits. This bike here with a SRAM Apex one by group set, WTB wheels and matching tires and nice finishing kit costs just £1,899 here in the UK, which is a really good price when you consider the weight is almost as low as carbon fibre and definitely lighter than aluminium. So the weight of this bike for a size medium is 9.65 kilograms, which is lighter than a similar spec but more expensive aluminium bike such as the Candel Topstone Alloy. So on the price front and the value for money front, this bike looks really, really appealing. You get a bike that's lighter than aluminium, but cheaper and definitely cheaper than carbon fiber. So very uh, tantalizing option if you are in the market for a new bike and you want that kind of sweet spot of weight and price, which it seems to offer. There are other builds available as well if you've got more money to spend, higher end SRAM, and there's also Shimano GRX one by and two by options as well. So check out the website, see what specs they offer and see what price point suits your budget. And then there's the environmental aspect, which I think would definitely be a bigger concern for people buying new bikes going forward. There's much more awareness of our impact on the earth, uh, climate change, carbon footprints, and it's where magnesium or super magnesium really comes in. And it's definitely a lower impact material than carbon fiber and aluminum. And you might've seen a recent survey or study done by Trek Bicycles on the carbon footprint, the environmental impact of developing a carbon frame versus an aluminum frame. I'll put a link to that down below, but definitely worth a look at and really opens your eyes to the kind of hidden cost of extracting and manufacturing the bicycles that we all uh, enjoy as we do. So I think the environmental benefit of magnesium is not something to be sniffed at. Those benefits include being easier to extract from the earth, less energy intensive to work on, and easier to recycle than carbon fiber and aluminium. And Vast is really keen to promote this benefit, as you would expect, it's a real USP, prints it all in the packaging, but goes a step further 
and in the box of Bike Horizon, there's no plastic to be seen at all, all cardboard and paper, so all easily recyclable. So if you are worried about the environmental impact of a carbon fiber or aluminum frame, then this super magnesium might be a viable alternative. So is this super magnesium bike enough to tempt me and you away from the other more common frame materials available right now? Well, I think I'd probably choose it over an aluminum frame. I like the ride quality. I think it offers a benefit over most aluminum bikes I've ridden in a gravel setup. Carbon fiber, different kettle of fish, a lot, lot more expensive, but does offer the weight and performance that this material can't match. And compared to titanium, which I referenced earlier, I think, yes, it can stand up to a good titanium bike in ride quality. I think this super magnesium has a lot to offer, a lot of potential. I can't wait to see the company roll out more bikes and more models and hopefully give this gravel bike a more modern geometry that it really deserves to really exploit and showcase the benefits of the material. There's a lot to like. And so far, it hasn't burst into a ball of flames. So that's a good thing. Yes, that's unfortunately one of the reputations that has stuck with magnesium over the years. But fear not, this is no firework. It's more likely to just melt rather than explode. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And as for corrosion, the other Achilles heel of magnesium in the past, well, the company uses a plasma treatment to give a ceramic coating inside and outside of the frame. I've only had the bike for a few weeks, so I have to take their word for it that it won't rust uh, through the winter when you ride it in the rain and mud. I am super impressed with this bike then. It offers a lot of qualities and a clear difference from other materials currently on the market. It's not perfect. I'd have this material in a bike resembling a more progressive modern geometry bike. And if it had those modern angles, I think it'd be a really appealing alternative, especially when you factor in the lower price and then the environmental benefits of this material over carbon and aluminium. So time for a verdict on the Vast A1 gravel bike. And well, it's a big thumbs up from me. There are a few things I would change on this bike though, mainly the geometry, but that'd be really fussy. And moving that to one side, the ride quality is very good and it offers good handling and performance on road and off road. Plenty of tire clearance, lots of mounts of bike packing. So a really credible alternative. So I think you can safely buy a bike, not just for the magnesium material itself, but for the way a bike rides, the price, the specification, it offers a lot on paper and it delivers out here in the real world as well. So what does the future hold for Super Magnesium and the Vast A1? Well, personally, I think the future is bright. I like the performance, the ride quality, the weight and the price and that environmental aspect as well. However, ultimately, its future depends on you guys and whether you spend your hard-earned cash on a bike like this. Is it enough to tempt you away from carbon, aluminium, titanium and steel? Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Love to hear your thoughts as always. Anyway, that's my review of the Vast A1. Do check out their website, link down below, and let me know what you think of the bike as well. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there if you haven't already. And if you want to see 10 of the best gravel bikes currently available, then check this video up here. Right, that's all from me and a very bored dog. Um, thanks for watching. See you all again very soon.